Welcome to watching Breakfast Plus this Monday morning and now for a discussion on the newspaper headlines published from the National Capital. We have with us in our studio senior journalist KG Suresh. Good morning Suresh and welcome morning. to the Good show. Good morning Suresh. Good to have you with us. Uh, well, we, when we look at the newspapers, <coughs> a mixed bag of stories. Uh, Rushdie is making headlines uh, but we'll take that up later. Let's begin with the election news. Uh, election fever is, uh, campaign fever is picking up in all the poll bound states. Uh, uh, we saw the election manifestos of the parties coming out in Punjab, uh, Manipur, and uh, in different places as well. Uh, the, uh, both in Punjab as well as in Ut Uttar Pradesh, uh, uh, the parties now want to give uh, compulsory IT education, the laptops and the tablets to the students and to the larger people. Uh, how much of a water does this hold? I mean, what I basically want to say is that when uh, there is this huge content in the election manifesto, how much is it taken care of by the parties? You see... Uh, a lot of this uh, manifesto promises are populist in nature. But at the same time, they also reflect popular sentiments. Mm -hmm. You could not imagine Samajwadi party talking about providing tablets and computers few years back. Today they have realized, and particularly when they are projecting a young man like Akhilesh Yadav, they know that in order to get the one crore plus new voters, they need to give promises that is, you know, uh, in consonance with their aspirations and ambitions. Mm -hmm. So today you cannot say that, no, don't learn uh, English, you know, only speak uh, and learn Hindi. You cannot have that kind of a talk today. Which was something which we saw in changing. the last election yes, campaign. times that are changing. Absolutely. So they have realized that. So in a way, the manifesto reflect the aspirations of the people, but at the same time, that does not mean that they are for implementation. They are basically, I would, if at all there is an equation, I would compare it with, say, the directive principles of state policy in the constitution, mm -hmm. where, you know, those are the ideals. Maybe the manifesto is a road map, a vision document. Wherein, you know, you say that this is our target, mm -hmm. how much they achieve, particularly in coalition governments, you see, whether it was NDA, where they had a, you know, a agenda for governance, or the Congress, UPA, Congress-led UPA, where you had a common minimum program, okay, CMP was there. There also, I have seen that more the focus is on the, uh, the, the allies insist that there is no deviation. Mm -hmm. You know, from you the, uh, so, uh, but yes, they do serve as a road map. And people, as increasingly they become aware, the voters, the electorate, they point out that, look, last time you promised this, you haven't fulfilled your promise. You're talking mm -hmm. of this, and one of the papers has put forth a cartoon wherein a politician is campaigning in a state, and he's talking to a beggar. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, he's asking for votes, and immediately he tells him, you first get laptops for, your, mm -hmm. for yourself, and then talk of electricity, water, <laughs> and education, and the basic amenities. That's what I said, it's more that populist. Not, but at the same time, you see, somewhere, you, you look at the Punjab manifestos. Right. We are not talking about just the laptops. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, the media focused on those aspects, mm -hmm. which are a little sensational mm -hmm. kind of. But both the Congress, but, uh, you know, and the uh, uh, SAD, they have talked about uh, female feticides, infanticides. Absolutely. Now, that's uh, an issue of growing concern in Punjab. Something uh, wherein there is you a huge a skew, yeah, ever widening gender gap. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, this gender ratio gap has to be taken care of. And uh, I'm uh, at least uh, happy to note that both the parties have given prominence to it in the in the manifesto. Absolutely. Well, that is something that is very important uh, with regards to the Punjab because we know though we do know that the uh, ratio there, the gender ratio yeah. there, is very skewed. One associated news with the election is that election commission has banned the exit polls uh, during the entire election process. How significant do you think that move is, particularly when uh, well, this has been earlier also? Uh, you know, uh, there has been talk about this, and uh, uh, you see, it has two sides. On the one side, of course, they may ask that, you know, a few days before that, how does it matter and things like that. But at the same time, when we are talking about fair polls, there should not be any element, any aspect which should, uh, in a way, uh, influence the voters at a subconscious level. Mm -hmm. If they feel that, look, this party is having an upper hand, maybe the educated electorate may not get swayed. TV is watched even by people who are not uh, educated who are not, uh, you know, mm -hmm. literate. So they may get swayed, you mm -hmm. know. Okay, this party is winning. So they, that may influence their vote. And you have no, these are not kind of, you know, uh, but except, say, two or three uh, well-known 
established research groups uh, you know they use the uh, surveys you know used by uh, you know agencies which which don't have any accreditation uh, there are no you know standard practices mm-hmm. so what is exactly the sample size do they actually reflect the so there are a lot of questions about their credibility authenticity Absolutely. So when these questions are there at, the, at that time, I think that it is fair that you know uh, wh- why these. I mean, like in US, you have you know uh, popularity ratings uh, every now and then. They have so uh, I around think, the clock. Right? Uh, yeah, around yeah. the year, around the tenure. Mm-hmm. I think we should also be having as a healthy democracy. You know, every time a major decision is taken, what is the popularity rating? Something like that, instead of just the pre-poll thing. You know? Okay, course, so we're talking about the popularity ratings, but then one of the papers has come out with the uh, positioning in Uttar Pradesh. It says minority. Hawks majority agenda in Uttar Pradesh elections, and it has talked of how seats uh, there have been divided on the basis of the uh, uh, minority positioning. So, also another paper has talked of uh, the Muslims being more interested in development. However, it uh, headlines and it has uh, highlighted uh, a statement by a, a general, a common man. There, he says uh, he's talking of the four percent reservation, which has been initiated, and he says, and in the four percent, there is nothing for the Muslims. Now, these are the contradictions which have been put forth by one paper, which is talking of highlighting minority uh, in the agenda for the Uttar Pradesh elections, and on the other hand, we see the same minority saying that they do not expect much. How do you read this contradiction? You see, politicians would continue to play the card. but now increasingly with the governance mm. occupying the top of their mind for any section of the society there is an increasing literacy and awareness among the society you know the people now not going by casteist and slogans of religion so while the politicians may play their card they may even field criminals they may even field corrupt mm-hmm. but the electorate particularly due to the media due to civil society groups they are increasingly becoming aware they are not getting into the trap hmm. if there is merit in the announcements they will vote if they feel that it's only hollow sloganeering and there is nothing substantial mm-hmm. for them i think the indian electorate is getting mature by that day okay. all right suresh thank you so much for joining us It's this pleasure. morning on the show thanks very much